We're just driving down the street, C-3PO, R2-D2, chilling next to the uh, the bot that they put on the back of the truck in Twister. <laughs> that's what the that, cow? That's what that looks like. Like the, oh, the, the, the thing that had like the little balls that went up into the tornado to give them all the data. <laughs> it's the Twister data thing. <laughs> Some sort of cow is going to fly through here soon. Is there a cow? No cow yet. Twister hasn't come. <laughs> Cruising along the coastal bit of this little island that we're on, and we saw some signs that said the word martyrum on them, and we were like, what? So we did a little bit of research on a sign <laughs> that was outside of uh, like a little parking area. And what it turns out to be is that in this part of Japan, there at one point had been a fairly substantial Christian influence because of all of the foreign trade that had been going on and stuff. And there had been missionaries and things that had come. And this was like way back, like 1500, 1600s time period. And at some point, the people that were in control of Japan got like, they didn't want all of the connection with the outside world and they closed off the country and stuff. And during that time period, a lot of the Christians that were living in Japan that were, some of them were Japanese, of course, and some of them, of course, were still foreigners and stuff, were persecuted and there was, it was dangerous for them. So they went into hiding. And this was one of the places, apparently, that one of the families was hiding and it is right on the coast of this little island and the story goes that the sun was playing on the coast and one of the patrol boats from the government or whatever the people that were chasing the christians uh had spotted the boy and came over here found the family and then executed them all so now they've got this little shrine that is set up there and modern day there are still uh groups of Christians that are like the descendants from those groups of people and they will come here once a year and uh, give offering and they have some sort of I'm not sure what level of like uh, celebration isn't quite the right word but just a remembrance I guess of what had taken place here and it, it, it's weird though like you don't think of Japan as like a Christian country at all but this area of Japan did have a heavy influence and that's why we're seeing things that we haven't seen in other parts of Japan, uh, the, the, the level of churches and these types of stories and stuff. So it's, it's a cool little find and uh, it was a hell of a trek down here <laughs> because we are down at the coast now but the car is way up so we had to come down this like this fairly steep little stair thing and it was a bit on the slippery side and it is uh, of course it's still raining and everything so that was it was a little bit dangerous and perilous but the bummer is that now we gotta go back up <laughs> and uh i don't know i guess that i guess that's a bummer but it's better than what has happened here in the past so i guess i'll take the stairs katie gave me this look when i was doing that she was like that was way over the line like she had this look on her face like she's saying, is it too, did I go too far? I didn't mean to be, I didn't, maybe it was not a tasteful way to end is that. Is this how you're clearing up your conscience? This is, is how, this how you're doing that? I don't want people to think I'm some I, sort of I, jerk. Mm, it's just gonna, it's just gonna stay as it lies. It's like, friend. it's one of those things that's like, if it happened like last week, like you wouldn't be able to say that. It's not, you too know soon? what I mean? But is, too, it, too is it too soon? <laughs> I, <laughs> we don't know how long ago it happened. It doesn't. <laughs> It doesn't say on the sign, and I tried to look it up on the internet, and I don't have any internet because we're way out in the middle of nowhere. So this I don't know. This water doesn't have internet? <laughs> no, now I kind of feel bad. No jokes about things like that. I'll try to keep it in mind. We're driving over this mountain pass, and we have come through this field of exploded golden grass that is sticking out because most of the trees around the forest areas are green. So you've got this baseball bat of fall colors just slamming into you. And we found this little uh, hill. <laughs> and it can't be more than five or 10 minutes to the top. So we decided we'd give it a hike. And there's a little muddy path. <laughs> and I'm wearing flip flops <laughs> that have like no grip on the bottom. So this is uh, one of the most dangerous things I've ever done in my life. This is my favorite part so far.
keep forgetting to introduce the car. But this is our rental, our Kyushu rental car, and we've named it appropriately Hotbox. Um, my butt is not as hot as it was before, but there's still potential in this hot box for toasty bums. For drivers only! <laughs> I wouldn't say there's anything significantly wonderful about it. It's a cube. Uh, a typical cube. No quirks or features? Except for hot box. <laughs> Your hot box or the car hot box? Both. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> Nagasaki is known for champon, and I don't know if it's Nagasaki Ken that's known for it or Nagasaki City, but we're in the place to have champon. And here in Hirado, we've come back to that small town that we stayed in last night, they have their own version of it, which has more of a shoyu base than what you'd get maybe in other place of Nagasaki. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a try. Today is super rainy, so this is very appropriate. I wouldn't say these are standard ramen noodles. They, they seem more towards spaghetti noodles, like what you'd get um, with the cold spaghetti on the side of your teishokus. And items that are on the top, we have pork. Um, these like little fish cakes are on the top as well. Lots and lots of vegetables. And I've also got some shrimp. So. It's just a collection of a lot of foods on top of rice, not rice, on top of noodles. Um, the broth itself is gonna be found out in just a moment. Very relaxed, I wouldn't say like it's a, it's a big thing um, or like some sort of flavor that I've never had before, but it is very comforting and Kind of the lady when I ordered it, she said chicken soup. I, I just showed you pork. This is not chicken, so that was kind of surprising. But the feeling that you get is like chicken soup. So maybe somebody's come in here and said, you know, it's like chicken soup. It's like chicken soup to this lady, and now she doesn't know what a chicken is. <laughs> My lunch was just a gyu yaki niku te shoku, so it was just a beef teriyaki-ish sauce style shoyu stuff Japanese thing and it's not really something that is like super duper noteworthy for this area so I kind of just ate it <laughs> but I did find something on the wall that was something a little more of this area and it is the local brew basically and they have a sake here and it is called I had to ask because like what is written with I can't read this crazy kanji it is uh hiran and it comes out in a little cup like this this is about 200 yen and I'm assuming it's going to be kind of jet fuel-esque because it is the local sake. <laughs> Side note on this, Eric has not drank any alcohol for months now. <laughs> this is going to be a fun car ride. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I had alcohol. It's been a really long time. Um, it is very strong, but it is like one of those things that is sort of like, it's still a little bit smooth. Uh, it's very strong on the flavor is very strong on the side of my tongue like it's i don't know if that's the bitter sensors or whatever but it does taste metallic i guess is how i would say they said um the lady said that it is made from like the local water and stuff and i mean i, I don't know if that's really important or anything <laughs> but uh yeah i guess they have a local factory somewhere around here that is using local resources to make it um It's easy to drink, but I think that I'm going to be stumbling a bit. Like, <laughs> I don't have a really high tolerance. <laughs> we figured that since we were in Hirado once again, and this morning we didn't make it up the hill to see the church that we had seen up above all those temples and shrines. I, I want to specify that I labeled this as the candy church. Yes. <laughs> like this is the church that if we didn't put the bride and groom on top of a cake and you put the church on top of the cake, this would be what was on top of the cake. <laughs> and we Boom. just had to come up and check it out. <laughs> it's pretty cool looking. It's unlike any other church that I've ever seen. I mean, like, shape-wise, it's totally a church, normal, for sure. but colors. The colors are These definitely These colors are, like, pop. mint green, <laughs> and, uh... It's like a white. Japanese idol. Yeah, yeah, it's just a, It is the idol of all churches. <laughs> well, 
We went to a little place to get a chicken sweet, and we've ended up with a tanuki. I know this is a very Hirado thing. From, uh, I was looking, they have like a whole page of sweets in our book, and this little guy's on one of the pages, and among it is a lot of other they're specific to here, but there's sweets you can get in other places in other ways. I've never seen this little guy. <laughs> and I walked in and I saw these bizarre little eyeballs and I was like, yep, you're coming to the car with us. We're going to eat your face. And uh, I, I was looking at it and we didn't know, it's not labeled like it's a tanuki. I, what, what was it called? Do you remember? It was a... Burero. Burero. Bure, burero, I think. Yeah, is yeah. right. And that doesn't mean anything that I'm aware of. So I asked the lady, I was like, what is that? Is that a bear? And she just kind of like giggled and she's like, it's a tanuki. <laughs> yeah, it is. Our little tanuki guy. Um, inside's supposed to be buttercream. Oh. Hmm. So kind of like a cream and then a cake inside as well. It's good. It looks good. Is it? it it's got like a little Debbie type thing to it. Is the head meringue? I don't know. How are we going to break the head up so that both of us get a bit of that? Like, <laughs> we, can't, we, can't <laughs> the, we, can't, we can't lady in the tramp this. No. <laughs> okay, I'll just it. try it up. Get that eyeball. Ooh, the eyeball's soft. Uh, oh, it's soft. So maybe it is meringue. Mm, that's it's the buttercream. Butter yeah. The top of buttercream. Wow, that's so buttery. Mm, it's barely sweet at all. It's just like some sort of fetish video at this mm. point. Like we're just like munching this tanuki. People who are really into people who munch tanukis. Yeah, there's some there's some group of people on the internet that are like, this is the this best. Is, this is looking great right here. <laughs> I would say I'm not a big fan of buttercream. It just ends up tasting like butter. What's up with that? Yeah, it's the, the bottom. bottom wow, was, the bottom, the bottom is really is good. Really yeah, good. you're right. That cake is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I think they made it in house too. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you can't take me seriously? <laughs> no, I can't take you seriously. They did not even provide you no. with some sort of beard guard. They, 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 they just, they are uh, not considering the people who... Have some buttercream. I don't want any of the buttercream. Have some buttercream. <laughs> So part of my scheduling freak out yesterday was that I was trying to get to these islands during daylight. And had we made our first appointment, gotten on the right ferry, we would have made it here during daylight. But since we had to go to the afternoon appointment to be minors for a day, there was no way we were going to make it here with time to see what we're looking at right now. But kind of feel like maybe we landed in the right time. You know, sometimes things get messed up, but sometimes you end up in the right spot. My favorite one's the crab. We've come from the northernmost part of Nagasaki Ken. We have now come down to a pretty southern part, but it is the most easternly section of the Ken. And I welcome you to Unzen Hell. This is a hot spring that is just enormous. And we rode over the hill looking for where we're staying tonight. Holy crap, we saw this gigantic cloud covering the road and we were like, well, we're just gonna go over there. Screw going to the hotel. Let's, let's, let's go over here. It is smelly, guys, really smelly. And darn frightening. It, it feels like an explosion could happen. And that wouldn't seem ridiculous at all. This is awesome. <laughs> Welcome back to hell. We are still in Unzen. We've woken up this morning and come back to where we were last night with a clearer view of what the hot springs here look like. And there are numerous hot springs. This is only the first one we've seen today, which is Hachiman Jigoku. And Jigoku means hell. That is the Japanese word for hell. And each of the hot, uh, the hot springs here, each of the little pits is a different hell. 
and that is a very cool thing to think of when you come to Hot Springs. This is one of the most boisterous hells that we get to see so far and we're gonna just walk around and find more hot springs and more farts. There's a lot of farts here. <laughs> Fart hell. Fart hell. <laughs> Behind these benches where there's not even a sign, there's a tiny little micro hell. And you can see just a tiny little poof of steam coming up out of the ground. And I, I think that's really cool because even though you have these gigantic pits of hell, you've got these little ones here as well. And it just reminds you that the entire mountain is actually brewing underneath. It's not just these specific gigantic places. back there was boisterous. This one seems a little bit chattier. For, like, listen, listen to it. I can see it. We have come to one of the areas that I was pretty, I don't know if excited is the right way to say it, but um, this is Oito Jigoku. So Oito Hell. And there's some stories about it. The first that I'm going to tell is the origin story. And the origin story is that there was a woman named Oito. She was married in a wealthy family. One day, she committed adultery and murdered her husband. She was very busy on this day. And obviously she got in trouble for it, arrested and then executed. And on her, upon her execution, Oito, or this pond, hot spring, started to bubble up. And that became a reminder of Oito and her rage. Found a Hellcat. <laughs> it's really relaxed and nice. <laughs> Bye, Hell Kitty. The second story for Oito Jigoku follows along Eric's uh, story yesterday about Christian persecution. And here at Oito Jigoku, in this hell, I don't know how long ago, I, I don't remember if I read it or not, but uh, they took 30 Christians and put them into the hot springs here. And they've erected a monument behind me to that. And that is messed up. Wow. We came up here to the Christian monument and not only is it a monument to the people that had been killed here in this onsen, it's also a monument to a bunch of other people that had been killed during the Christian purge in the 1600s that had been burned at the stake in some other places or crucified in other places. So kind of like incorporated all of that tragedy into this one monument here. And uh, yeah, I don't know, just looking out over this bubbling pit of hell and then thinking about like what these horrible things that people have done to other people, just really kind of a bit shocking and just like you just kind of can feel like it's just it's not a good feeling man it's not good we're in front of Dai Kyokan and the Dai Kyokan means like the large scream or yell and the reason it's called that is because it is the most audible of the hells that are up here on the hill. And the way that they express this is that the people of the underworld are groaning and screaming about the tragedy they're experiencing. <laughs> it is, a uh, the imagery <laughs> is quite good on these signs. Like, whoa, it's intense. The other thing that it mentioned is that the steam coming up out of the ground at this specific one is 120 degrees Celsius. So that is about half the temperature of Katie's ass in that seat in that van yeah, yesterday. Yeah, it was <laughs> so hot. We first encountered these little rock stands or towers, piles of rocks in Korea. And we heard that they were about remembering the dead in a way, especially uh, people who had died before their time. And uh, yeah, this is almost like, to me, looking at a graveyard, a remembrance of other things that may have happened here. I don't know if that's the intention of what's going on here, but that's what I feel when I look at it. I had not remembered that that was what those things were for. <laughs> what I always think when I see them is that it's like a little game that you get to play with people you've never seen before. Like you get to put one down and then somebody else will come later and add to your little collection. And that's, that's, all, that's all I've ever taken did from you, it to remember. Did you play the game? Yeah. 
I gotta go back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to touch them. I, I actually, it feels like you know how people feel about like walking on uh, in a graveyard. Oh, okay. That, that's what it feels like. I don't want to touch. I do. Of it. I, I had completely forgotten that backstory about it being something about like a remembrance of the dead thing. But what's really interesting is our our thoughts about it. Like mine, mine is extremely in my direction. Yours is extremely in your direction. Playful and fun for you. Scary and forbidden for me. <laughs> what's that say about our inner psyche? <laughs> Tell me about your mother. <laughs> we read a sign that says, don't drink this water or you'll die. Is anybody looking at this going, yeah, get some of that. Nah. Did Gak used to look this way? Gak? Gak. The Nickelodeon stuff? Yeah. Come on Is this now. the color that it was? I think it was. How old are you? <laughs> the, the average age for Gak. <laughs> As is popular in a lot of these places that have onsens, they are boiling eggs in the onsen water, and then it's supposed to be like a healthy thing or whatever if you eat them. My egg has horns. I am surprised. <laughs> What's from hell? <laughs> I am surprised that they are not a changed color, because in the past we went to Hakone and we ate these and they were black. So I'm not sure what created that blackness now that I think about it. I thought it was just like the sulfur or magic or whatever, but these eggs just look like they came out of chicken. The only difference is they are fairly warm, uh, quite warm actually. And it's nice because it's cold out here and it's warming my hand up. But I'm going to go ahead and put my egg in my pocket while Katie is peeling her egg and introduce you to something else we got with the egg. And it is a lemonade that they make in this area. And we don't know a whole lot about it, but a lot of times they'll use like a natural spring or something to make things like this uh, when they have water famous activities. You got your egg? Smell like eggs? It smells better than the over there. Does it? Yeah. And I think it's, I don't know what to expect. Here I go. I'm going like straight into the middle. Yeah. Kind of salty. <laughs> oh, it's a nice, that, that's a good boil they got going there. Yeah, they did good. Mm. <laughs> it's a really, really, really rich yellow. I've been looking forward to this egg. I've been looking forward to this lemonade. For how long? Uh, since I saw it, maybe two or three minutes ago. Yeah. That's a, you just, you just took my, uh, my egg passion, which I've had for like weeks now. You've taken that down to two minutes for your lemonade. Is it cider? No, it's it's well, actual lemonade. Uh, Sometimes they say lemonade and it's cider, and I hate cider. Why don't you taste it? You tell me. Mm, it smells good. <laughs> it's somewhere between lemonade yeah, and cider. It's somewhere it, it's, between. It's 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 not a strong like cider flavor and it's not a strong lemonade flavor but it is a little bit cider is usually not bitter at all and this is a little bit bitter it looks like about how this girl feels like if you saw her like, <laughs> she's pretty and it's all right but i don't know what's going on here I don't, hope, don't look at me like that i hope she didn't cheat on her husband and kill him <gasps> oito <laughs> could be oito mm. i know a lot about cocaine <laughs> i really don't know anything but I know that this is not cocaine. Inside of our bag, they had folded up like this little sheet of paper and we didn't know what it was. And I opened it and almost knocked all of this salt out on the ground. This is salt for your egg. I thought that was really, really nice of them to provide you with some salt. Um, but I already ate my egg. You gonna have it on yours? Yeah. <laughs> this little broom pit is called Suzume Jikoku. That means sparrow hell. And the reason that they've given it this name is because they think that the sound that it makes, which is like a fast gurgling sound, is the sound that a sparrow makes. But I'm trying to think of any time I've ever heard a sparrow make a noise that makes any sort of like relation to that in my head. I just can't quite find that information. <laughs> Back in the day, I used to put stuff on my rear view mirror like just hanging random things there. But this, this can't be legal. He's gonna touch you and then he's gonna go behind you and he's gonna sit down because this cat's got moves. Oh no, oh really? <laughs> yes, cat. <laughs> he's not leaving, wow. He's learned. 
breathing in real deep. A very short ride outside of Unzin, the city, you can ride down a toge, which is like a pass, that takes you to view a volcano that blew up in 1990. And slowly since 1991, a mountain has been forming, getting larger and larger. And that's the formation that you see behind me. It's Heisei Shinzan. So Heisei for the time period that the mountain started forming, Shin for new, and San for mountain very cool that we get to see something that's forming now. We, I tend to think, and most people probably do, that mountains are these old things, but yet what's standing behind me is new and getting it's bigger. It's newer than you, dude. It's newer than me and <laughs> way bigger than me. And actually it's filled with lava and I want to be able to see that lava, but we can't at the moment, at least we can see some steam coming up from it that's caused by the lava. Very cool stuff, and maybe we'll get to see something even more interesting. I don't know where this toge is gonna take us. Sometimes we're just driving down a road, you know, and you know, you're just like, just looking off into the distance and stuff and you see something. And sometimes you'd see something and you'd be like, wow, that's really weird. Like, it doesn't make any sense. But I saw something and I was like, oh yeah, that's pretty normal because last winter we were in Europe for so long. And uh, then it clicked and I was like, wait, this is actually weird because <laughs> It's a castle <laughs> and when we were in like the UK and stuff. It was like kind of normal You just see castles off in the distance all the time But in Japan when you see a castle that's shaped like this that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense So we were like we got to stop and check out the castle. It turns out It's just a part of a really large park. So there's nothing like super special happening here or anything It's just something they built for the kitties <laughs> Okay, so I kind of lied that it wasn't so special because apparently you can go up on the top of it and it's looking like you can go all the way to the top, top part of it, which is pretty legit. High place. From the top of the castle, you can see the mountain top that we had been looking at from the toge from the mountain pass hey, earlier. Shinzan. Yeah, <laughs> the new mountain. And uh, it's just off in the distance a little bit, like a layer behind the closest layer. It's a pretty good view from the top of a castle. It's not something you mm. normally see from the top of a castle like this. Volcanoes a volcano. and castles. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the kind of castle you'd expect to see in Japan. We are now in Shimabara. And Shimabara is like a coastal town, and there's a castle here, and there's a restaurant here in front of the castle, and they serve a special type of soup that I've never really seen before. Solmen is very popular here, which is a noodle soup, but this has something a little more special to it. Mochi and steam. I may have once or twice had mochi in a soup, but it doesn't happen very often. And it just kind of, is fallen a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a bite to it. Whoa, it got a friend there. We'll go for another one. It's kind of hard to. Mm. It's still got a little bit of like surprising grit to it. Like still a little bit of form or Maybe they let the mochi sit out a little bit and get crackled, and then they put it in. I don't know how to explain it. It has a texture that isn't super smooth. Um, I don't know what else is in here. I just know it's mochi, and that you were not so interested because it said seafood. And I'm, we got a mushroom, lots of mushroom. Ah, here's the seafood. You know, this is uh, chikua, what we were talking to that lady about earlier. Chikawas inside of there, lots of mushroom and vegetables. So a very standard, wholesome, I wouldn't say offensive in any way. I didn't taste the broth. The broth. What's the broth? It's like two brassiers. <laughs> two brassiers. Good. Little tangy is too far a word, but it, it hits the back of your tongue and is quite nice, surprisingly. I thought that the, the broth might be a bit boring because it's a clear broth. Mm. Once it's clear, I don't know what to do with that broth. <laughs> what, 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 what to expect? No idea. <laughs> I got a Wagyu Teishoku. So it's made with like um, Japanese cows and it is just uh, chunks of meat and it looks like they put it into a pretty dark sauce. 
and uh, I'm not a huge Wagyu person. Like people are always like, oh, you live in Japan, you must eat Wagyu all the time. It's like a couple times I've had it, to be honest, I don't eat it so often. So I'm not gonna know where this is on the scale of Wagyu, but I'll tell you where it is on the scale of Eric. So I can compare it maybe more to like a normal like American steak or something like that. And it's a lot chewier than what you would like expect out of a normal like American style steak. And usually that's because a Wagyu is like kind of like a marbled meat. So it's got, of course, normal meat, but then it's got like lines of fat that kind of run through it. And that's like what is good and there's like a percentage of fat that they're supposed to be to have it be like good stuff. It's a little bit too chewy for me, to be honest. Um, the flavor is all right. The sauce is not an overwhelming flavor or anything but I don't feel like that the meat is really coming and delivering a whole lot of excitement or anything, which is, maybe, I, maybe I'm looking for more excitement than, I, than, than there is, than should be expected. Um, it's kind of where I stand whenever I eat like a chunk of meat like this, where I'm just kind of like, it's okay. It never like blows my mind. Uh, also in the group of Teishogu items, I have just got a little bowl of rice. It has a little hat and uh, that's nothing but white rice which is honestly the part I'm most excited about after I just got done slamming the Wagyu and a little bowl of soup. And oddly enough, um, well, the soup is actually pretty clear. It's just a miso soup, but uh, when you stir it, it gets pretty heavy. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, that's pretty tasty. That's a good miso soup. But the, the thing that, that came out that surprised me the most is uh, the oranges. <laughs> I feel like we're at the babysitters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is like not what you would normally get at a place like this, I guess. So I was like, oh, there's oranges on the Teishoku with the Wagyu. It's an interesting addition. I mean, I'm not upset. I mean, oranges are good, but it's just like, I kind of think like, are oranges classy? <laughs> When you have a dish and it has multiple items in it, just doing that first initial taste test, you don't really get to understand all the things that are in it. So I've basically picked through this and found all the bits and pieces. Um, we've also got more fish cake, which is just standard fish cake, fish and flour. Poof, it tastes great. Um, we have like an omelet style uh, egg. I already ate an egg today and I can't remember how to say egg. <laughs> An, word. <laughs> an omelet style egg and uh, in the seafood world there is eel in here uh, I believe this is eel from looking at it and tasting it it's meaty it's definitely from the sea and uh, good but like not how you would expect it if you got it on top of rice um, other things that I found in here were chicken this is actually chicken soup <laughs> uh, unlike what we had the other day the mushroom, I don't even know how to explain how, I didn't know that mushrooms could be succulent. This is, they are succulent mushrooms, blowing my mind. And the thing that made us laugh the most, and I, I need to get the best one out of here, unknown white floppy thing. <laughs> we we still, I, I, I bit it, I have no idea what it is. It, it tastes like bread that's stronger than bread. It has absorbed a lot of flavor, but it's not breaking apart like bread would. Had I picked that up and it was bread, it would have just plopped down. I have no idea what it is, but it's good. And with this wonderful broth, I'm, I'm blown away. True talk, saw this, thought I was gonna be disappointed because pretty hungry and it's a clear broth, people. What do you do? I don't know what to expect. But the, the mochi is a great thing about this, but it's not the standout by itself. There's other things in here that are like, oh yeah, that's really good. So I'm pretty happy. Just follow my lead, okay? Okay. It's classy, totally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Time capsules are neat. This one's gonna be closed for 50 years. They're gonna open it up in 2040. <laughs> Wonder what's inside. 1990 Japan. Probably like a Nintendo or something. <laughs>
What do you think's inside of that time capsule? Butt plugs, because it just looks like a butt plug. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, I want to talk about castles. If all the castles have moats, why is everybody using the same like level of defense? Have, haven't they all just like figured out how to thwart that amazingly? Yeah, but it's, it's not like a password that everybody has the same password to. We yeah, but if you genetically and... engineer, like if, if you just start getting your people all sorts of ready for this, like... Do you, you think that some places some superhumans that can jump over moats like long no, old No, 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 they're not jumping legs? over moats. They're able to scale down real quick. They can swim across real quick and they can go up real quick. We got triathletes out there. Let's get them on this. They could invade. <laughs> <laughs> but not why somebody up top is like throwing rocks and stuff. No, that's part of it. That's the training. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get right on it. This is quite-tastic. Um, one of the reasons that I came to Shimabara was because I saw koi just swimming in the streets like this. And this is just kind of a ditch off the side of a road you can drive on. I think cars can come down this road and it's one of the koi is going backwards. How do, how do they do that? There's a reverse for fish? <laughs> We see lots of cemeteries as we travel through places. We've seen several as we've been riding along the roads here in Nagasaki, but this one has stopped us because of this gigantic Buddha, which seems to be a minor theme in this run. We found the big Buddha over on Ikitsuki, and now we've found this big Buddha here in Shimabara. This is one of the largest reclining Buddhas, I think, in Japan, possibly. I, I kind of expected it to be a little bit bigger. I don't know. When you see biggest, you really think big. In this graveyard, behind this, <laughs> behind this reclining Buddha, we found this sign and it's like the questions of mysteries or whatever. And it's a quiz that you can take. And it looks like it's one of a series of them that I'm assuming is spread out around the town. This is the only one we've seen though. And it's got a bunch of questions that are fairly easy because we were able to read them and answer all but one of them, basically. Mm -hmm. They are questions about like, what's the name of this mountain in this area? And, and so, so this is like a mountain in the area and we used Google Maps to figure that out because we don't know all the names of the mountains. Here's the food that I ate for lunch. Yeah. This is uh, the well-known snack like omiyage you'd bring home from Nagasaki, which we're excited to try. These are the koi that we just saw on the street. And uh, this is the snack that we're gonna have in a couple of minutes <laughs> and then this is the one we had to look up yeah this was the name of a character that is like the character for a um what was the word uh, geological park or something that we didn't go to and it was like the the, the one of these guys you know what i mean mm. like the character and then when you get all those you get all the answers and then it uh runs down this way and you get another answer you so you so no you sweet yeah you can you can which just meant water, water, water pipe. Water pipe. But we keep reading that the water from this specific area is super famous. Yeah, that's true. So there must be something, and maybe you take that one and add it to the other ones, the answers oh, yeah. that are spread it around town, and then you get like a grand answer of some sort. Yeah. But I, I, I was mostly struck by the fact that this was, you know, we're in a cemetery. Yeah. People doing puzzles. People doing puzzles. <laughs> and we completed it. I'm proud of us. <laughs> What's the name of the town? Shimabara. Shimabara? Mm. In the middle of Shimabara is a little lake that when I first looked up the kanji, it said like the kind of lake that's made from a sinking thing. And I thought it was a sinkhole. But then I finished out the rest of the kanjis and I realized it is actually a lake that is formed from a volcanic caldera. Yeah, so it's so. a little bit like Crater Lake. So when I was in like third grade, I wrote this uh, report about Crater Lake and uh, I was always fascinated with it and I always thought it was going to be really cool and I always wanted to go and I talked to Eric's mom recently and she said that it was completely closed and that we wouldn't be able to get to it, but booyah. 
we forged the snow. Yeah, it's taken us like 45 minutes to get up here in the snow. We got stuck. <laughs> it worked out though. Wow. Pretty picturesque. It's everything I thought it was going to be. And colder. It's much colder. <laughs> That's true. Arctic. But on a side note, sinkholes are scary. <laughs> Is that your biggest fear, right? It's one. It's it's high on the fear list, and I don't really feel like I'm a fearful person. But the idea that the ground could just go out from underneath me, nah, not cool. <laughs> you got a lot of faith in the ground, and it's just being like yeah, yeah, stripped I, away. I, all of my faith is in the ground. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> but so if this is a caldera, it's not on a mountain really. It we're doesn't like down. Make sense we're not up me. on a mountain. So maybe I wonder if it's like the ground collapsed because of something else exploding in the mountain and like mm. uh, I, I don't know what like yeah, the ge it, geological process Everything seems process so level here, here for, yeah. for quite some area around it. So it really does just feel like a lake. It doesn't have that caldera. The mountains are in the distance quite a ways, like 20 kilometers or something like mm. that. So yeah, what, what Perhaps happened? Perhaps it was a pretty big sinkhole that brought the whole a uh, volcano down and then that's what happened. <laughs> so you happened. think there yeah. used to be a volcano Yeah, so there here. was a volcano and the volcano just fell down and then that's what happened, yeah. And that's not what happened. <laughs> Yo, I can see, there's koi in this lake. What? I'm serious, oh, I, I just saw one, one, a black one. There's no way you'll see it in the camera, but there's there's fish. Yeah. Just take, 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 take have faith in my fish reporting the yeah. way Katie has faith in her ground. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do have faith in my ground. It's time for water balls. It is time for water balls. <laughs> I was gonna say that uh, the camera can see the koi, but maybe you shouldn't have so much faith in me because I'm not sure if those were actually koi or not, but they're like the same size and they're fish and yeah. they're in this town, so I'm just doing the math. I have faith in your fish recognition abilities. Thank you. What's the like, fish equivalent of botany? Suckonology? <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> We have come to a little area here in town that is something that almost every Japanese town has got, and it's this thing called a Shotengai. And it's just a long street with a bunch of different shops on it and stuff. And a lot of times in modern days, they tend to be kind of like, I don't want to say run down exactly, but a lot of times it'll be like old people clothes. It's, it's and like they had their heyday. Yeah, they had their heyday. It's kind of like the mall in the United States now. Yeah. The mall is kind mm -hmm. of dying. Like these Shotengai things seem like they had their heyday. It was in the 70s and it's still holding on. And well, it's, you usually, it's because the infrastructure is still there and they're not going to tear yeah. down the stuff. Yeah. yeah. And you usually don't find um, something that is what I would call beautiful or magical inside of one of these Shoten guys. But this place that we found is kind of one of those things. Mm -hmm. And they have a Japanese garden and like a very like traditional looking Japanese house. And inside of it is full of the maneki neko, the little lucky cats. Mm -hmm. And there's like a room that is just like bustling with them. There's tons of them. And we're sitting in a big room now with a bunch of other folks and the little cats are around us everywhere and it's it's just very it feels very classical and very but kind of goofy, goofy at the, same, at the same, time. same time yeah that's a really funny way to put it it's like somebody's traditional but they know they've gone over the the deep end for, in some ways um, the reason that we've come is because they have a little dish it's called kanzarashi kanzarashi and this and is the first time i've ever heard of this i've been calling them water balls because it just looks like little mochi balls in water. It looks like my lunch. And <laughs> that's good that I think you're associating it with that because the only thing I know about how these things are made is that they run water over them for two hours and water is the thing that comes back over and over and over from this place and in their little japanese garden they've got a pond here and it says that four thousand tons of water flow through there every day mm. so but i can't figure it out because it doesn't look like it's moving so i don't know what exactly they're talking about but that's what our documentation says you and said this is syrup the, this one has got a syrup okay and so yours, what i thought this, was water is really like a syrup perhaps or? perhaps so yeah in these little dishes is these little balls and then a yeah. syrup that they make in-house now i'm jealous because i really just thought it was water does yours not have syrup no syrup okay and you you have you have azuki which azuki. is like a red bean red bean Mushed paste up i guess red beans. yeah that's how you say it so let's get into these balls and like i said they, they've made these balls by two hours of like 
flowing water over them. And I'm assuming it's like the natural water from the area. What are we gonna do this to? Oh, it's Fika, so we have to do it to a thing. Two balls. To, no, we've probably already done it to balls. But we've done it to balls, maybe. To water balls. <laughs> Is it just mochi? Mm. It was not mochi, it's turkey. So they formed it into, like, they made the little mochi balls, and then I think the water going over them makes the outer part of it um, kind of squishy. Very squishy. The very inside, tenderized. The inside is tougher. Yeah. Okay. Then, also, of note, they brought us some. I guess spring water is how you would say it. Yeah, so this is the water that is popular here. So no, not just, popular. It's just local. Yeah, local water. It's just water. Shimabara no mizu is what I asked for. <laughs> Give me your water. <laughs> tastes it's like, crisp. Tastes like crisp water. Uh, yeah, let's put it over good. top of no, yours. No, no, don't, ruin, don't ruin my syrup, baby. <laughs> yeah, syrup was a way to go. Although the... Uh, I can't think about it. Azuki? Azuki. I always mm -hmm. want to say on, but mm -hmm. Azuki is still quite good. We have come up to the second floor of this little restaurant place, and it's just more and more of these little cats. It's a bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. What I'm mostly impressed with is their ability to keep this place dust free. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> seem like really weird or gross or anything. Like they're yeah. coming up here making sure it's really nice. <laughs> There's a lot of little characters to make sure they aren't like yeah. covered in chunks. <laughs> For those who didn't know what I was talking about when I was talking about the special donuts from Mr. Donuts that are Ponde, this is Ponde Lion, and he is the mascot for those donuts. Probably for the entire donut franchise, but those donuts in specific. So the donuts are just a ring of Ponde, little balls. Here he is, and he's catified in that special cat way. I'm gonna make a ribbon. So let's, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> you pull on this bit, and it's super difficult to pull that. Like it's really glued because they haven't been able to put glue anywhere else. So they have to do the mega glue at the beginning. So then you can see that this side has got the diamonds and stuff. And uh, so that's over there like that. And we got a dangle situation. And then there's this cord here, right? <laughs> All right, and then it gets stuck in the mega glue, which is the a exact nightmare. The same thing that happened last yeah, time. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Okay, there we go. And then just pull. Wah, bam! That's the best wrapping I've ever done in my life. I'm like notorious for not wrapping gifts very well. It's just like a complete disaster. But that, that's pretty good. This is good technology. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me a person. Our time for a Nagasaki road trip is coming to an end, but it's coming to an end in a really great area. Uh, we've come back to Nagasaki-shi, which is the actual city, and we are on the outskirts of it, up a mountain, where we get to oversee the city, which is just bursting with lights, and bursting with lights that are pure, pure white, like super, I want to say LED is the thing yeah, I want to say. the day we say. came here, you were like, wow, the lights here are a different color here, than they are in Tokyo. They're, they're, they're like pure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is an angelic city. Something that's really cool about that, too, is that it just happens to be Christmas Eve mm. right now. So it's sort of like we're getting like an interesting twist on a illumination or yeah. Christmas light stuff. And, and that also brought a lot of people. So there's a lot of people who want to come up to the top of this mountain. So we ended up having to ride a shuttle bus up here, which was strange. <laughs> but anywho, Nagasaki, our uh, road trip. Yes. What, what did you enjoy? What did you like? What was my favorite thing? Uh, let's see. I, you know, as it always comes down to, I really have a hard time picking any single thing. I just like cruising around, seeing something cool, pulling off and finding it, and like checking it out. Mm. You know, things like that are really, really the, the essence of a road trip in, in, in itself. And I think that like, even though we had that day that was really rainy and really windy, it was still really awesome to just go and mm. we went out and like really, cause when, when, when you have weather like that, it's like, okay, is it worth getting out? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I did that extra times and, you and were like, like oh, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. And I'm really happy about the things that it was worth it for. Like when we went up to that lighthouse and climbed up that lighthouse and it was super duper windy. Mm. Like it's just a cool moment. Like things like that are really what stick out to me. Yeah. Um, my favorite surprise was the big Buddha that we saw up like in uh, 
um, the, the seated Buddha, not the reclining Buddha. My favorite, like, it wasn't really an activity, but a thing that we got out of the car to do was go up on those orange hills. That was amazing. Mm. And my favorite food was, and this is this doesn't make any sense, but it was the um, onigiri from Rick Mothel. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even show mine in the video. Mine was kind of weird. It had four different ingredients inside, but I didn't know what the ingredients were, so I felt like I was just going to be showing you, like, I don't know what this is, I don't know what that is, but it was just cool. It was gritty and weird stuff. and strange, and why are we getting this? I don't know, and it, I really enjoyed it. Mm. Yeah. So what's going to happen now with the video series down here is we are going to be exploring Nagasaki City um, for a few days and we're going to be putting some videos together about that stuff mm. and then maybe even a little bit more from Nagasaki before we move on to what we expect to be Kagoshima Yeah. unless everything goes We are up. maxing out this holiday time the <laughs> yeah. best that we're we can. We're basically down in Kyushu for three weeks so we're going to shoot a whole bunch of stuff down here and see what a lot has got to offer which is really exciting. Now we got to go get on the shuttle we bus. We do have to get on the shuttle <laughs> bus because we're going to be returning our car at the last possible second as always. As always, yes. <laughs> when you're walking down the street in Nagasaki, you tend to look at the vending machines. What do you find? And Eric's like, what is this? And I looked at every single thing except for the mystery thing in the middle. The Mr. X. What the <laughs> crap is this? It's 100 yen. Guess who rich? Yeah, let's do this. Our guess is it's a mystery Migi drink. Hidari. Migi Hidari. Migi? Go Migi. Migi. <laughs> Mr. X? Orange. It looks like just kind of a watered down 15% juice orange juice. <laughs> wow. You know, when I see this, I thought like a, a hostess bar or something like that. <laughs> you know, like I thought real freaky stuff. I didn't think healthy juice. <laughs> well, that's healthy. It, it's 15% juice! <laughs> <laughs> so you think in the rest of the percentages are health? <laughs> yeah, all of it is health. <laughs> and I used to love those uh, buttons when uh, I go to Giant, and Giant had all those vending machines next to it. And you could put in a quarter to get the cheap random drink, like the thing they couldn't get rid of. There's usually nothing too exciting, but but the gamble, the randomness was so good. <laughs> totally worth the 25 uh, cents and totally worth the fact that maybe I wasn't too jazzed about that drink. <laughs> Nagasaki is well known for champon, and champon is a noodle based. Got our noodles down here. That is not noodles. <laughs> I'm gonna start over. This one's okay. It's like the old concrete. This is scary as crap. Like Eric mentioned yesterday, a little bit of Christian persecution going on in this area. And one of the acts of that persecution is the second story for uh, Oito G. I fucked this up. <laughs> a very short ride outside of, where were we staying last night? <laughs> Do you even know? <laughs> Shit, I don't know. Ohayou gozaimasu, Matsunaga. <laughs> No. Just a reminder that we're selling t-shirts for a limited time right now. You can check out our shop at the links below. We hope you enjoyed our Nagasaki road trip. Next up, we'll spend some time in Nagasaki Shi, the actual city. Make sure you're subscribed. Liking and commenting helps us too. Check below for all of our social media links. As always, a special thank you to everyone on Patreon.